Amen. Hello. All right. That was a little bit loud. There we go. We backed down. Friends, we are so glad that you are here with us at First United Methodist Church San Marcos. We are grateful to have you with us, whether you are here in our sanctuary or whether you are joining us via our live stream. Um, however you may be joining us, we would love to reach out and connect with you. If you are a guest or a visitor here today, at the ends of our pews in these wonderful, yours may be a different color, uh, pouches, um, we have our Connect card. And in our Connect card, we just want to get your name, your address, your email address, your phone number, um, where you were on August 5th, 1963, just normal things. Nothing to worry about, all the normal things. There are some little ones that were going like, I wasn't anywhere then. Thanks for letting me, I appreciate that. Your daddy wasn't either, but don't tell. So we would just love to get some, some, some of those contact information so that we can reach out to you uh, to let you know what a joy it is uh, to worship with you and to answer any questions that you might have about us here at FUMC San Marcos. And because we're into uh, wise uses of resources, on the very back of our Connect card, we have our prayer card. And that is for anyone and everyone. If you have a prayer request or a praise, um, we invite you to fill that out Put, both, put them into the offering plate as they are passed by. Um, we take our prayer requests very seriously here at FUMC San Marcos. Pastor Danielle and I pray over these every single week, and they help guide us as we reach out to others um, who might need pastoral care during the week. So feel free, please do pr fill out either the Connect card or the prayer card. I have a few other announcements as we get going this morning. I want to let you know that this Wednesday, um, our Bible study will be back. And with that, we have pizza. <clears throat> I think that one's going to be a hit, Brett. <laughs> so join us at 5.30 p.m. in our fellowship hall this Wednesday for pizza. And then at 6, we'll have Bible study together. Also, I want to let you know, uh, we have been telling you all uh, to, to get on with our digital uh, directory, and some folks have said, well, I, I have issues. We are here to help today. Um, your pastors and your communications director are going to be going around to our Sunday school classrooms to help you get connected to our directory so that you can get, uh, get that. Um, if you need help, just find one of us during the Sunday school hour. Uh, Pastor Danielle, who's the one who really knows how to do it all, um, will be in Todd Hall. I will be muddling my way through a couple of the Sunday school classrooms. I apologize in advance. <laughs> Robert, Robert, Robert will be there to help, so he knows what he's doing. But we will, we will be there to help get everybody through together. Also, next Sunday, after, sir, after 11 o'clock service in Todd Hall, we are having our kids' ministry dreaming and planning session. Uh, pastor Bonnie, who is now uh, taking on the role of associate pastor to children and youth, uh, is, is, is as we are, are looking to, to, to really kind of bring together our kids' ministry and kind of help us figure out how do we go forward and how do we grow these ministries, uh, we are inviting the families to come next Sunday at noon in Todd Hall. We will even feed you uh, to, to help us dream together and help us plan together so that we can, we can move forward in ministry. Also want to let you know, I know it's crazy to think of, but graduation is coming. Not for you. <laughs> True traffic. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to be okay. <coughs> so if you <coughs> or a student are graduating this year, <coughs> thank you. Thank you. If you or a student are graduating this year, please <coughs> reach out to Pastor Bonnie. I did not help. By April 15th, so that we make sure when we do graduation Sunday, <coughs> we don't miss anybody. Amen. Amen. 
Also, we want to let you know of the Save the Date, June 23rd through 26th. We are going to be having our Vacation Bible School <coughs> Wildlife. We're doing it a little bit different this year. Um, we are doing an evening VBS. So we're going to have the meal at 5.30, and then the programming is going to be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So if you worked and you couldn't volunteer in the past, congratulations, that excuse is not valid anymore. <coughs> well, that's sneaky of us, isn't it? All right, so please mark that on your calendars. Also, for the summer, we're, we're putting out the word already for our summer series. From June 2nd to August 11th, we are going to be doing a summer sermon series called VBS for Grown-Ups. And here's how we want y'all to help. We want you to cast your memory back just a couple of years to when you were little ones in Sunday school and vacation Bible school. And what Bible stories did you love the most and would you like to hear us preach on this summer? So last year, we asked you to give us your, your, your favorite minor biblical heroes. This year, we want your favorite Sunday school stories, and we are going to preach on them throughout the summer. So please be, feel free to give uh, Pastor Danielle or Pastor Adam your feedback on your favorite ones. Additionally, 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 can I have your... Hey, look, I found Jesus. <laughs> So we, for this current series, our current series is called Sightings, and we're talking about all the times post-resurrection that people saw the resurrected Christ. And to go along with that, we decided to play a little game with everybody. We have these little Jesus figures that are strategically hidden around campus every single week. And the rules of the game are this. Every week there will be seven Jesuses, there you go, that are somewhere around our campus, and you are invited to find Jesus. Cindy. Are they inside or outside? Yes. <laughs> they, most of them are going to be in, in pretty easy to find places. Inside. Most of them are going to be inside because we don't want randomly them to disappear. But... If you find Jesus, A, the little Jesus figurine is yours to keep, but if you find Jesus, bring it to Pastor Danielle because she has a full-size candy bar. I know that she is going to give you for, your, for, for finding Jesus. And here's the other rule that I had to emphasize with our two little ones who eagerly found Jesus this morning and kept looking. It is a one-time thing. Once you find Jesus, you are out. <laughs> you, get to find Je you, you have found Jesus. You don't need to keep finding Jesus. You have seen Jesus. All right, friends. So share. Get out there and look. We still have three Jesuses for this week out there. All right. That is the end of all of my announcements. Praise be to God. Friends, I invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in our opening prayer. Thank you. Cough drops. The words are on the screen and they are also in your bulletins. Lord, open our eyes anew to see you today. Burn in our hearts, Holy Spirit, as we journey with you on the road of faith. Reveal yourself anew to us today, Lord Christ, as we break bread in remembrance of you. Let us see you in our everyday lives and let others see you in us every day of our lives. Amen. Please join us as we sing together number 304, Easter People, Raise Your Voices.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Join me in the prayer of illumination. We need your presence on the long road, Lord, the road between fear and hope, the road between the place where all is lost and the place of resurrection. Like the disciples walking the road to Emmaus, we are in need of your company. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Our reading today comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place these, in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what happened on that road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. All right, I'm going to invite our children to come up for children's time. Come on down. Huh? You want to sit next to me? Okay. Come on up, guys. Come on. Y'all want to come sit over closer? All right. How about I sit right here so I can see everybody? Oh, we're playing musical chairs. All right, can you can sit next to me during the sermon. How's that sound? All right. Have y'all ever gone on a really long walk? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, who'd you go walking with? You four. It mm -mm. was during Christmas. During Christmas with mommy and daddy and your sister? How about you guys? With my mom. With your mom, your dad? Did you walk in silence the whole time? Yeah? yeah? No? No? What'd you talk about? Everything. Everything? Uh, you forgot <laughs> how you wanted to go back to bed? That sounds accurate. Well, today's story is about two guys who were walking for about two and a half hours. And about halfway through their trip, somebody shows up. Do you remember who shows up in the middle? Yeah. Yeah, who? Jesus. Jesus, you were listening. Good job. What do you think that you would talk about if Jesus showed up on your walk? Uh, what sorcery is this? <laughs> what sorcery is this? Okay. Harry Potter, you can come out now. Okay. What about you? What would you talk about? If Jesus showed up on your walk, I don't know. you don't know. Would you just be really surprised? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it is, a, a little bit surprised. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah. It's a little surprising when Jesus shows up in our life, isn't it? Well, we're gonna hear what he talks about with these disciples, so maybe you can listen and find out. So let's pray, okay? You can repeat after me, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for showing up in our lives. Help us to see you and listen to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all can go back to your seats. Huh? Yes. I'm going to invite us to stand and sing together in the garden. The words are on the screen or in your hymnals.
You all may be seated. I invite you to pray with me. Lord, may your word fill us today that we may see you anew in all the places that you are around us and that others may see us in you. We pray this in the name of Jesus the Savior. Amen. Amen. As Pastor Danielle shared during the children's time, the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a seven-mile walk, was about a two-and-a-half-hour journey. And along this way, two disciples encountered Christ and talked with Him on the way. Which leaves me with just one question. How in the world did they not recognize that that was Jesus with them right there? Like, did they, did, did, was Jesus wearing like Clark Kent glasses? Was it an eclipse? Maybe, maybe they were two of the disciples that all the other disciples are like, you know, you guys hang out in the back when he's preaching to the crowds. Because we don't want anybody else seeing y'all. Like maybe they weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. But it, I really wonder, how in the world could they possibly miss that the one they were walking with was the, the, the Messiah that they had followed the last three years? They were on their phone, that was it. <laughs> ah, smartphones done in again. How could they miss what was right in front of them? I think there are a couple of reasons. See, the way they talked with this man that they didn't recognize as they walked communicates a lot. You notice how they, they, they talked about didn't you know what had been happening in Jerusalem? Didn't you hear how there was this prophet of power who was sent by God, but the leaders killed him? And then today, this morning, some of the women from our group, they said that they, that they went to the tomb and that they had a vision from an angel. That is, by the way, if you read earlier in the Luke, that is not what the women told them. So good news, ladies. Mansplaining has been around for at least 2,000 years. And not good news. Not, not, not good news. But the key for me in understanding how these men could not have recognized Christ is this. We had hoped. Luke says that their eye, they were prevented from recognize him, recognizing Christ. And I think this is the key. Because they had a hope. When they encountered Christ on the road, they were no longer carrying that hope with them. They were carrying some other things. They were carrying grief. They were carrying shock. They were carrying the burden of their failed expectations. We had hoped. We are not hoping. They had hoped and they had built up all these things they thought Jesus was going to do and had come to do. That he was going to restore the kingdom to Israel. That he was going to make things like they used to be. That he was going to make things the way we want them to be. We had hoped, but we don't hope now. And because of these things, 
they could not see. I wonder how it was that they could not see the nail-scarred hands, but they could not see them. I wonder how it was that they could not hear that familiar voice who taught the greatest teachings, who preached the greatest sermons, who commanded winds and waves. I wonder how it was that they could not understand the signs all around them. Some go to the tomb, find it empty, and come back and say, we have seen Jesus, and they could not see it. The men from their group went and said, yep, the tomb's empty, and they could not see it. Jesus comes, and he walks beside them, and he says, how slow are your hearts to believe? Come on, guys. And they could not see it. Jesus explains, I love how it says, this. he explains everything, starting with Moses. Like, okay, let's go back to the beginning, y'all. It's only a two and a half hour walk. I got a lot of ground to cover. And they could not see it. Until... Until the breaking of the bread. And I wonder, what about the breaking of the bread did it? Like, did Jesus use the same words he had on Maundy Thursday earlier that week? When he said, this is my body given for you. Did he use the same type of bread? Was he sitting in the same position? Or maybe, maybe it was that when we gather around tables together, our walls start to come down. Because when we gather around tables together, we have to become receptive to the person next to us, in front of us, around us, in a way that we don't have to be when we're merely walking together. See, when we're walking together, we can just as easily move to be walking away from each other. But when we come to the table together, we're kind of stuck there until the meal is over. The table has this tremendous power to draw together. I think there's a reason why Right now, we're going through a, a Bible study called Meals with Jesus. There's a reason why Scripture talks so much about times people ate with Christ, times Christ met people at the table. And when Jesus met these men at the table, suddenly it clicked. Suddenly, they saw, and I love how it says, and immediately he vanished. <laughs> it's like, all right, you got the message. It's time for me to go. I got someone else. And they rushed back to Jerusalem. Y'all, I also love that part of the story because I don't think it took them two and a half hours to get back to Jerusalem from, from Emmaus. But the reason that they stopped for the night there was that it was already dark and it wasn't safe to travel. But then Jesus appeared and they recognized who he was and they're like, we got to get back and tell everybody. And when they got back, they found that, oh, everybody there already knew. Turns out it's okay, ladies. We, we, we believe you now. Peter saw him too. Sorry, ladies. Sometimes they just don't get it. Sometimes I look back at this story and I'm like, how could those disciples not 
see Jesus. And then I look at the church today and I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's how. How is it that we don't see Jesus all around us? I mean, you know, right now we have the actual figurines, but how is it that we as a church, as a big C church, not as a little C church, how is it that Christianity doesn't see Jesus everywhere we look. Why don't, why is it that we, we, we look out at the world and we're like, oh, everything is going so badly, instead of saying, how, where is Jesus in the midst of this? That we can turn bad things around. Is it that we still also, like the disciples, carry this expectation of, well, we had hoped that Jesus was going to make things the way we wanted them. We had hoped that Jesus was going to make things like they used to be. We had hoped that Jesus was going to be on our agendas. Instead of we had hoped to be on his agenda, we'd hoped to be about his work. Why don't we see? There are many things I think that we as a church don't talk about not seeing. Some of them are not encouraging things. We don't talk about not seeing fewer people in worship with us. A group called Gallup that does a lot of religious surveys said that in the last decade, the average person who defines themselves as a weekly attender of church went from 42% of the faithful to 30%. In this conference of the United Methodist Church, the average church in our conference in the last decade is worshiping 42% fewer people per Sunday in just 10 years. The one number that tends to be increasing are numbers that we as the faithful wouldn't want to see increasing. Those who identify as not religious, no religious affiliation. Amongst 18 to 29 year olds, that number has grown to 35%. We have no church home, we don't really want one. The fastest growing spiritual group in our country, according to Barna, is people who are spiritual but not religious. Yeah, they believe in a God, but they don't want anything to do with organized churches. We don't talk about those numbers very much. But I think part of the problem is that we don't recognize the steps of how we got to those numbers. See, we got to those numbers by making Jesus about our expectations instead of being about his expectations. I think we got to those numbers by giving into a culture of division in a world that is increasingly divided. Instead of being people who break bread together. Now, I give you this bad news to leave you with good news. The good news is it doesn't have to continue this way. We are about the business of resurrection. And only things that have died can be raised to life. 
We are a people who believe in the Easter story. And the Easter story is ongoing. So let me tell you about where I believe Christ calls us to signs of life. I think first and foremost, it is in the breaking of bread together. One of the things that young folks, I'm using this term very, very broadly, look at the church and they're like, well, they don't look like us. It tends to be a homogenous group rather than a diverse group. And I look and I'm like, yeah, skin tone tends to be pretty similar. Which is why it is important for us as brothers and sisters to break bread together with our brothers and sisters. It's why I'm grateful for groups like Jackson Chapel joining us on first Sundays. Because it reminds us that we're not the only body. That's why I'm grateful for connection with El Buen Pastor because it reminds us that we need each other. Friends, we are not meant to do this journey on our own. The world is hungry. Same stats tell us that While people don't think they'll find Jesus in church, people are actually looking for Jesus more today. There's a greater spiritual hunger reported amongst those who identify as spiritual but not religious than there was amongst those who were, eh, a generation ago. It's not that they don't want Jesus, it's that they don't think they're finding Jesus here. Which makes our task pretty easy, doesn't it? We need to be meeting people where they're at. We need to be breaking bread with them. We need to show them what they don't yet see. And that's Christ in us. Amen, church. Would you pray with me? Lord, I thank you that you are risen today and that you reveal your love all around us. And I ask that you would make us a people of your love, a people who share your love with everyone that we meet so that all might recognize you and want that love for themselves. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as you are able as we respond to the word by reaffirming our faith. Our affirmation today comes from the Apostles' Creed, the ecumenical version, which can be found in your hymnals on page 882. Brothers and sisters, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
We continue our worship by giving our joys and giving our praises to God. So what are we joyful for this morning? Yes. I have an oldest child, my son Darwin. Okay. And his daughter, uh, Darcy, with my youngest granddaughter. All right. You've got your oldest son and your youngest granddaughter with you in worship. We say thanks be to God. Yes. Um, my best friend that lost her son in September has just announced that she's expecting a little girl in Okay. All right. Your friend who lost their son in September is expecting a little girl. We say thanks Thanks. be to God. I found Jesus. You found Jesus. All right. And and I noticed Cheryl subtly got up during the opening hymn. So did you find Jesus too? All right. See, Jesus is there to be found if you're only looking for him. All right. Other joys. All right. So Friday and Saturday. All right. Your alma mater held a. Uh... No, my, uh, we're currently oh, where well, you're currently? Okay. Sorry. Your college uh, shared about diversity and inclusivity and equity. equity. There are those letters. All right. We say thanks be to God. Randy? For the rain, For the rain we received, we say thanks be to God. Other joys are great. All right, Margaret celebrating her 29th birthday. We say, thanks be to God. Other joys. Okay, for Hung Jin, who plays for us and does such a lovely job, we say, thanks be to God. Other joys. Uh, Athena? We think the eclipse is going to be fun. <laughs> Texas weather, right? All right, yes, and and that reminds me, the office will be closed tomorrow so that we can can participate in that as well. So if you do go watch the eclipse, make sure you have protection on. We don't want anybody going blind for staring at the sun, okay? All right, what burdens would we bring to God this morning? None? We need to pray for the McCaskill family. The McCaskill family? Okay. The McCaskill family who lost their son in a motorcycle accident. Yes. Say, Lord, hear our prayers. Other concerns. Okay. Your neighbor who lost their son at 28 years. Say, Lord, hear our prayers. Those who are suffering from disasters, either natural or man-made. We say, Lord, hear our prayers. Oh, no. Carolyn Goss fell and broke her shoulder this week. We say, Lord, hear our prayers. Huh? Continued prayers for Armando Contreras, who's still dealing with a stroke and all the rehab that comes with that. Lord, hear our prayers. Okay, Mondo might get to come home Thursday. We say, Lord, hear our prayers. Other concerns. Okay. Continued prayers of healing for Bridget Griffin. Lord, hear our prayers. Anything else? Okay, continued prayers for James Hart. Lord, hear our prayers. Let's pray. God, you give us blessings upon blessings, and this morning we are grateful for pregnancy announcements and children and grandchildren coming to visit, for birthdays and anniversaries and celebrations. We are thankful for the rain that waters our earth and for the opportunity to marvel at the wonder of creation. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings all around us that we just don't see. We pray that you would open our eyes to recognize your goodness all around us. And God, we bring to you the burdens on our hearts. 
for families who are grieving the loss of their loved ones, for others who are facing illness in mind and body and spirit, for others who are facing disasters either natural or man-made, and for all of them who are living without hope, we pray that you would empower your church to carry the greatest hope of all, the resurrection of Jesus to those who need it most. So we pray with confidence the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to share signs of God's peace with those around you. may be seated and I invite the ushers to come forward as we give our gifts to God. Let's pray. God, all that we have is a gift from your good and loving hands. We pray that you would take what we offer, whether it's in the plates or through online or through checks later, but that you would use it to share your hope with a hurting world so that your glory can be revealed and we can all see you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Next slide, please. Okay. So friends, we come today to break bread together. We come to a place where Christ makes us all one and invites all. In this church, Christ reigns, and we believe that Christ is the Lord of this table, and therefore, all who are here are welcome to receive. Amen? Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right. It is a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from slavery to captivi from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, good God of war and might. are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of his darkness, in, out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and he blessed it. And then he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, remember me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ. has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours now and forever, all loving Father. 
may be seated. We will have, uh, I'm going to invite our servers to, to help uh, come up. Uh, we will have two gluten stations on either corner. We will have the gluten-free in the middle. If you are on this side, move to the uh, far wing and come down. If you are on that side, move down to the far wing and come down. If you are in the middle, divide yourselves as you wish. <laughs> We will serve our servers first, and then the table will be open to all.
Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as you are able for our hymn of invitation, verses 1 through 4 of number 318, Christ is Alive. May you see signs of Jesus everywhere. And more importantly, may others see signs of Jesus in you. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.